All right, great. Thanks, everyone, for being here. It was really inspiring to come in this morning and see uh, you know, what a crowd. I think we're already filling up all this space. So it's a good sign. Hopefully, uh, next time, we'll be able to increase our venue size. But um, I'm really delighted to be a part of this community. And uh, today, I'm just going to talk a little bit about how I uh, started my team at Wayfair, called Wayfair Next. Um, so let's get right into it, talk a little bit about the company. So for those of you who don't know Wayfair, we're an online-only um, home goods retailer. Uh, so we essentially sell a lot of furniture to customers without having you know, sight unseen, essentially. So we know the convenience of online shopping. Amazon's obviously been very successful in this space. Um, and Wayfair has been successful as well. We're probably seven to eight years behind the growth curve of Amazon. And that was actually a compelling thing that I found Looking into the company, it was like, wow, these guys have been around. They actually started in 2002. But following this um, growth of, you know, in the 60 to 70% year over year growth, sustained for at that time was, you know, over 10 years. And we've been continuing to grow and, in fact, accelerate. Uh, the company went public while I've been there over the last couple of years. And it's, I think, a natural fit for using these advanced technologies of visualization to essentially solve a core need for the customer. Um, so I was excited to you know, be a part of this uh, organization. And um, I had an Oculus Rift before joining the company, which I was just you know, using as an enthusiast. Um, I was actually one of the first 20 backers to give Palmer Lucky some money on the internet before he did his Kickstarter. So I was originally assuming I was going to put together an Oculus Rift myself as a kid of parts and have fun with making crazy apps and never s expecting this much acceleration and to be here you know, just a few years later is quite tremendous. Um, so I had this Oculus Rift and I was thinking like joining Wayfair, like, hey, this is a good potential future opportunity. I remember the first week with my manager, we sat down in our one-on-ones and he was saying like, well, so where do you see yourself in a few years at Wayfair? What do you want to do? Um, I had started as an engineer doing full stack like web development. Um, and I said, well, you know, I think virtual reality is uh, the natural direction where consumers are going to want to engage with our, our website. And he's like, well, that's really interesting, but there's no VR opportunities here today. And I'm like, yes, I understand. Like, it's a little ways out. Um, however, I was able to take um, an idea and a concept in a hackathon the following summer and put together a simple room configurator in VR on the original DK1. Uh, the CTO and CEO got to try it as the final judges. And um, the CTO, Steve Conine, was all excited about it. And meanwhile, uh, Niraj, who's our uh, CEO, got sick. or Not literally sick, but he was like, I can't keep this thing on. <laughs> and so that kind of you know, didn't help my prospect of uh, developing this new team for virtual reality. It was kind of like, OK, well, keep doing your day job. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. Um, but a year later, I did an AR hackathon project on the Google Tango, which I acquired over the winter. And, hadn't really had the opportunity to do anything with. And I was like, OK, we get another hackathon coming up. Let's make an AR app. And it was a pretty simple demo. I actually spent more time modeling the furniture than I did actually writing the code. Uh, Google did a nice job with their SDK. So I you know, showed that. You know, they, they were impressed this time. Both the CTO and the CEO were happy about it. And um, we you know, later ended up starting the Wayfair Next team. Um, but you'll see that you know, Steve's face in, is in here mentioning that he started the 3D initiative. And I'm going to talk about that on the next slide. This was actually really the real catalyst for Wayfair Next starting. I mean, I could you know, keep winning hackathons, but if there wasn't a business case around moving into this space, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, and so Steve, you know, he's one of our co-founders. And he was looking into how can we reduce the cost of photography. Uh, what we were doing is really ramping up our individual products. like we created these new um, custom wafer brands of products that we were selling before under you know, the normal like, supplier brand. And we thought, you know, we're going to curate all these products. We're going to come up with our own look and style and story for the customer to make it easier for them to find things that go together well. And the problem was we were taking all these products, having them shipped to a facility in either Kentucky or Massachusetts where They'd have to assemble the product, build the background, build the whole stage, have photographers come in, the stylists like tweak every little thing in the photo. And they'd create you know, these nice looking um, pictures like the one you see here. But it would cost about $1,000 on average. And so what Steve was finding, his background's mechanical engineering. So he was in the 3D space and thinking, like, how can we take um, computer-generated imagery 
and create a photo that looks this good. And in fact, that's actually a rendering um, that Steve had done early on, and it cost him $250. So for a quarter of the cost of the photo studio process, here we are with an identical output, and yet the value that we get out of this as well is these reusable 3D models. So not only can we re-render the scene in the future and use it for the 2D lifestyle work, but all of a sudden, the things that I was pitching, the VR and the AR stuff, started to suddenly make sense. Like, we have the assets available to enable these technologies. Um, so what this is kind of based around is this 3D product library. And I believe we have the largest 3D product library, certainly of furniture, that's out there. And it's growing rapidly. So we have over 20,000 models. The majority today are being hand-drawn. So it's, on average, $25 per model which you know, is quite expensive, but given that we're saving money on the photo costs, um, it's actually working out well for us. My team is also working on uh, 3D scanning using photogrammetry. Um, we find that we can actually you know, hit a lower price point, about $15 today, and we get you know, beautiful, hand, uh, uh, photorealistic, super accurate products that we can eventually push to the supplier and have them create the asset for us. Um, so we're excited about building this model library because it enables the renders we're doing today, uh, the VR and AR efforts of Wafer Next, and then also this 3D model API that I believe we'll talk about a little bit more later. And the 3D API is an opportunity for us to get those models out to the community, to other developers or other startups that are looking to do interesting things with uh, virtual furniture. Maybe you're staging a uh, new development or new construction and it looks empty. We want people to see our products because we think the more they see our products, the more likely they are to buy them from us. Um, but ultimately, it comes back to the customer experience. So if we're going to be developing technologies using augmented and virtual reality, we have to be you know, looking at our core challenge and a core you know, solution for the customer. So in our case, it's how does it actually look? Without having a physical store, that's an important problem for us. Like Photos don't necessarily do a product justice. And we want to be able to show scale and size and you know, the appropriate dimensions. Um, so with our augmented reality app on Tango, you can load up a, a virtual product. We'll be doing a demo next um, session in block four uh, over in Studio 3. So you can see how that works. I'll be de giving demos tomorrow as well. Um, but we found that we solved a real consumer problem. Um, in 2016, we released three different apps. We have Wave Review, as I mentioned, on Tango. We also made an Oculus Rift app. It was more of a, um, I guess, a prototype that we were showing at shows. We saw what IKEA put out there and thought we can do much better. Let's just release our app. Uh, so we have an Oculus app that's pretty fun. Uh, we also have Wayfair Idea Space, which was a Google partnership that we did for launching Daydream. It's inspirational-based virtual reality. Um, and then lastly, I just want to talk about a few of the things we're still working on and what's next for the Wayfair Next team. Uh, 3D scanning, as I mentioned, is kind of a big growth area for us. Uh, we're working on improving our 3D model API. We want to make sure we have assets that the community can use in real-time applications. Um, wearable AR is exciting, although it's still a few years out before it's going to be consumer-facing. Um, room scanning is also one of the number one uh, requests that we get from customers. When they see some of our VR experiences, they want to know how they can see their own space in that type of environment. So scanning comes into that. Social VR is huge potential. I think out of all the things about VR that excites me the most is this ability to connect with people. And I think that's one of those things that people don't understand today when they try VR because it's very isolating. So social VR, and then lastly, damage detection. It's kind of like the one thing that doesn't fit with the rest, but it's an interesting problem that my team's using IoT devices to sense damage in real time in transit so we can improve our network. So that's it. That's uh, Wayfair, Wayfair Next. If you guys have questions about the company or in anything uh, AR VR related, you can find me. I'll be here all day and tomorrow as well. I also run the uh, Boston chapter of the ARVR Association, which is a professional organization for connecting uh, people like you to opportunities around the world. So reach out to me for that as well. Thanks.